In my last video, I did manage to get the Pong game working on my hack computer, but uh, I admit it was pretty anticlimactic because I did it right at the very end, and the game ran too fast for me to actually play it to make it, I don't know, even compelling to see that, that it was actually working. So what I decided to do is to see if I could make changes to the program to, you know, be able to play the game at least a little bit without dying. And so what I did is I opened up in chapter 11 of uh, Elements of Computing Systems, they have a program listing for the Pong game. And what you see on the right-hand side of the screen is the main class called ponggame.jack. And in particular, the run command. Notice on line 71 and line 87, there's a do syswait, which is basically just a busy wait uh, for the game. So it occurred to me, well, I just, you know, be because the syswait OS function that the original authors wrote was tuned specifically for whatever version of their hardware, assuming they even had hardware, um, that they wanted to make this game run the way they wanted to run. I, I have not timed SysWait for my own hardware. Uh, you know, this FPGA that I've been using, uh, I'm running the CPU at 24 megahertz, which is actually pretty fast, I would say. And so in theory, this is supposed to be the number of uh, milliseconds that you want to wait, but I have no reason to believe that a SysWait of one is going to wait one millisecond on my hardware. But in any case, it doesn't really matter. I just need to put a number in here that sort of makes sense. Um, and so I did that. And what I discovered was that my VM translator was pretty inefficient in translating to assembly language to the point where the Pong game, as well as the OS components, were coming in at something like 52,000 lines, which is way too big. The ROM is 32K, so... You need no no greater than 32,000 lines. What that told me is that I, I either needed to modify my translator or I needed to go find a translator where people have done already done the work. Well, there are plenty out there. I couldn't really find one documented where somebody had actually gone through the pains to get uh, at, a, at a level where the original authors of the book had done. On the left-hand side here, what you can see is the assembly language uh, that was done by the original authors. In chapter six of the book, they took the Pong game and put the assembly language version out there for you. Uh, and so, and obviously this compiles into something like 27K bytes or something to, something to that effect. So my idea was, okay, I, I don't want to... I don't want to modify my VM translator at this time. So I'll just go in and find the line of code that's calling syswait, and I'll just change this value of 50 to something else and then rerun the assembler and reproduce the binary. I thought that was simple enough. So I found, you know, I found the beginning of ponggame.run. That's what, that's what this line of code signifies right here. That's the label that, that begins this function, essentially. And, you know, the first major call that does anything of import is key pressed. So if you kind of scroll down here, you can see the call to key pressed. Yeah, it's right here. That's actually loading the address of the function into the A register. You keep going. There's a bat.move. There's a... Uh, where is bat.move? Oh, there it is right there. Bat.move is right here. And then there should be a ball move. Yep, and there's a ball move belonging to this Pong game class. So right after this, we should see a call to sys.wait, right? Problem is, we don't. Now, this, this code right here, this is code that I added in to perform a sys.wait call, and this code was pulled from running my own VM translator to assembly language found the point where I'm where I'm making a call to sys.wait and I cut that out and I injected it, inserted it into the original author's Pong game. Uh, and you'll notice this parameter right here that says 100, that's the parameter that did say 50 and I changed it to 100. You'll also notice, like if you look at 
Uh, for example, the label for move ball, setting up uh, the stack and so forth, their code is quite a bit shorter than my code. If you look at my code for making a call to sys.wade, you can see that it's quite a bit longer. So I'm obviously, I mean, my code works, but it's obviously much, much longer than it needs to be. So probably wouldn't be that hard to modify my VM translator by looking at the original author's me methods of doing it and, you know, either emulating what they're doing or whatever. And there's some blog posts on the Nanda Tetris site that talk about various uh, optimization techniques. But be that as it may, I injected my own code to call SysWait. So you can see the call right here. And there's, so that's, that's doing it in this spot right here. However, there's another spot that you need to do it. So I found the other spot in code. Uh, you know, you keep scrolling down here and eventually you get, so here's the other spot uh, where I put uh, basically this call. So I reran the assembler that was provided, that, that's provided as part of the book to rebuild uh, this version. So I reran the assembler, I regenerated my ROM, and uh, obviously I went into the program ROM here and reloaded my contents of my ROM with the newly built binary. Um, but before I resynthesized this, uh, one problem that I was having that I, I haven't really showed, uh, but on the last video uh, when I recorded the Pong game, I would actually load the binary, the synthesized binary onto the FPGA, and the game wouldn't start. Not always. Sometimes it started fine, but sometimes I would just see a black screen. Now, I would see a black screen, but the monitor would seem to indicate that it was receiving v uh, VGA sync signals because the Samsung monitor displays a little thing at the top left that tells you uh, what kind of resolution that it sees. But the screen would be black. The game wouldn't start. Doing some thinking, what I realized is, well, maybe since the, v since the monitor always seemed to come on with the sync signal, that, that, that would mean to me that the FPGA is running, at least with some of the design correctly. So let's assume then for a moment that the whole design is running just fine. But what if there needed to be a bit of settlement time to correctly start execution of the first instruction uh, provided to the CPU? If, you, if you've done any uh, retro work with older processors, you know that, the, say, the 6502 requires, uh, I think, seven clock ticks before it actually starts executing instructions. And it may be that every processor requires that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I just put in a counter that counts up to, what is this? This is an 8-bit counter. So it counts up to 255. And when this counter rolls over, the rollover, the overflow goes high, which I run through an inverter, which then brings the reset signal low. And this is, uh, this is an active high reset. So when it's high, the CPU is in reset. When it's low, it comes out of reset. So once this counter counts up to 255, reset signal goes low and it stays low because I don't reset the counter any anywhere. And then the CPU just runs. Uh, and I found that this seemed to solve the problem. Every time I loaded the design thereafter, um, the Pong game started without any problem. So tip to you, if you're encountering this kind of behavior, uh, evidently uh, a little bit of a delay for things to settle might just be what you need. If you'd like to obtain the files of the source code and the design that I used to shoot this video, you can go over to my Odyssey channel, it's linked in the comments, and become a member, even if only for a month. That'll support the work that I'm doing and, uh, you know, enable me to continue to make content. If you'd like to see more content about building the hack computer on an FPGA using Logisim, you can help my channel out by subscribing and liking the video. Link below, you'll find the next video in the series.